how to use a book to get media coverage or PR. So if you're watching this module, it means in your marketing plan, you identified two things. The first one is a large segment of your audience reads specific blogs or written media. And two, there is some aspect of your book that would be appealing as a story that would run in those blogs or that written media. In this lesson, we're gonna show you a basic method for getting free media coverage about your book, essentially for getting PR. The methods that we're gonna teach you have resulted in coverage in pretty much everything you've ever heard of, from the Wall Street Journal to the New York Times, to the Harvard Business Review, Business Insider, Entrepreneur, Newsweek, TechCrunch, CNBC, Fox News, I could go on forever. Literally almost every single uh, media outlet in the Western world has run articles or coverage that me or people I've worked with have initiated. To be clear, when we say media coverage, we're talking about pitching written media outlets and blogs and have them write an article that covers an interesting idea that's in your book. That's what we're talking about with this. Pitching other forms of media like TV or podcasts is great, but it's different and you use different methods and those are covered in other modules. Now, this process that we're gonna teach you is designed to be simple and easy. This is not an instructional guide about how to be a PR professional who gets a job at Ogilvy or how to pitch media full-time. This course assumes that you have a full-time job, you're doing this in your spare time, and you want the process to be as streamlined and easy as possible. We're gonna teach you two different methods to get PR coverage. The two methods are called pitching and quoting. You can do them at the same time. They're actually both, they work well parallel. We're gonna start with pitching, that's the hardest one, and then we're gonna explain quote. Pitching phase one, preparation. The first step is to identify where you want coverage and why. Now your first step, obviously, you should have already done this, is to make a list of media outlets you'd like to be in. You should have done this in your marketing plan, right? Generally speaking, this list should be small to begin with. Well, I think the op optimal size is somewhere between three and six media outlets. The reason be is because a long list is both intimidating and probably unrealistic. It's much easier to get press once you've gotten a little bit of press. So you want keeping your list small and realistic gets you some momentum to keep going later. Now, this is very important. We've covered this before, I'm gonna say this again. The smaller and more niche the media outlets, the better for you. This means not going after the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times first. Instead, focusing on trade publications, small blogs, things, local media, things like this. The reason is twofold. First, you're far more likely to get coverage in niche publications and local media. Second, that audience is actually more likely to respond to you. I know it seems counterintuitive, but after decades of doing this, I've learned a few things. And I've learned that niche media generally converts way better for most authors. Let me give you an example of how this works. If you've written a book about, let's say, how credit unions can market themselves better to customers, your ideal news media are, are people who work at credit unions who would potentially hire you, let's say, to help them market better. That means association newsletters, credit union association newsletters, and magazines and trade papers should be key for you, not large national newspapers. You're gonna get more coverage from, let's say, the Credit Union Trade Association than you will the New York Times, and I know it sounds crazy, you're gonna get better results. Here's why. Even though probably most of the people working at those credit unions read the Wall Street Journal, they're not reading all of it, and they are not looking for business advice in the sense of how it's related to credit unions. But when they re read the Credit Union Trade Association paper, whatever it's called, they're looking for specific business advice that's gonna help them in their job. That's why you wanna focus on niche publications because your, your audience is targeted and they're more likely to convert. So for most authors, the ideal initial pitch list sounds something like this. Local newspaper, regional magazine, industry blog, trade journal that covers your public, your profession, uh, the blog of the professional association for your profession, and then another niche job, or sorry, another niche blog that covers a related profession. That list for your initial round of pitches is ideal. Step two, get to know each outlet and their audience. Once you have your list, make sure you study each outlet and get to know the audience. 
This means you should be able to answer questions like, what does their audience care about? What information do you have that their audience can use to change their lives? If you can't answer these questions that are pretty obvious, then you should really remove the outlet from your list. It means you don't know it that well and it means your pitch is probably gonna fall flat. Remember, again, no one cares about your book. They care whether your story will be interesting to their audience and drive traffic for them. In other words, they wanna make sure you're gonna get them traffic for their ads, really. That means you need to give them something, a story that's gonna spread and be shared. Step three, research and pick a specific writer at that outlet to pitch. Do not pitch media outlets generally, that doesn't work very well. What you wanna do is research specific writers and then identify the ones who cover your specific beat or area. Also, you wanna do your research on the writer beforehand so that you can talk about things they've written before or themes that they've shown an interest in. And that way you can also avoid pitching a story they've just done. Also, this research should help you find out if they have specific guidelines for submitting story ideas. If they do, obviously follow their guidelines. Pitching phase two, the pitch. The first step in crafting a pitch is to craft stories to send to writers. Now, once you've identified appropriate media outlets and the writers at those outlets, now you can start crafting stories to send them. Yes, you can have more than one story angle, but you're only gonna be pitching one angle at a time to one writer. Now, there's things, a few things to remember about crafting your story angle. You're not pitching your book. Don't do that. You are pitching a story that the writer will possibly want to write about, and yes, it can relate to your book, and ideally it should, but it, do, it should do so in a way that seems obvious and clear. Writers, I, can't be, I cannot be more clear about this. Writers are interested in stories. They don't care about promoting you or your business or your book. They only care about themselves and their audience and the stories that will appeal to their audience. Compelling human interest angles are always potential news. Those are the best to pitch because writers always wanna put a human face on information. So if you wanna understand how compelling human interest angles work, go read any, almost any news story. If you'll notice, the first few paragraphs are about an actual human being who has the problem that's being described later on in the story. So for example, when the lead uh, in the water issue hit Flint, Michigan. Every story started off talking about a little girl or a little boy or a senior citizen who was sick from the water. Then it went into the details of the actual lead in the, uh, the story, the lead in the water. The reason is because without understanding the impact on real people, which is the story, the human interest part of the story, most people don't care about abstract problems or trends or information. If it's not tied to an actual human and a story in that human's life, for example, young kids too sick to go to school, old person is too sick to leave their house, then no one's gonna pay attention or care. It doesn't matter to them or they can't understand why it actually is relevant without that sort of human interest story. So when you're creating your pitch, keep this quote in mind. It's a great quote from a real journalist. The most creative way I've been pitched and the thing that makes something stand out is with a personalized proposal that takes into account what I cover and considers why readers would want to learn more. So there's a pretty clear method for pitching. There's about five, four questions you have to answer. A story angle should answer, what's the hook? Why now? What's the twist? And what's the takeaway or the value add for the audience? I'll give you some examples of story angles for authors that have worked with us. The case studies are attached. But for John Rulin, he wrote a book about giftology. He wrote a book called Giftology that was about how to give, how corporations and businesses should give gifts to customers. So for example, at Christmas time, he does this every year at Christmas and it works perfectly because the hook is uh, that how businesses should give gifts uh, to, to customers, right? That's the hook. Every, every business publication is always writing about that because every business always cares about it. Why now? Well, at Christmas, that's gift giving time, so that's why it's relevant. The twist is 
And this is what's really important. John says businesses should not give gifts at holidays because the gifts usually get lost in the shuffle um, uh, and, get, and they seem small compared to the other big gifts you're getting. So you actually should give gifts at totally normal times when no one else is giving gifts because then even small gifts are gonna stand out. And the, the value add is for a business, you should now change your gift giving strategy to make it more impactful. That's a great story angle that's worked for John lots and lots of times. Another example is Stefan Arstall. Stefan, uh, his hook was he has his employees work five hours a day and that's it instead of eight. So why now? There's really not any specific reason, timeliness in the year, but that's a very hot story because it's about c company culture and employee happiness, which is always relevant. The twist is he doesn't have them uh, uh, take any lunch breaks or do anything. He just assigns them a set amount of work and they get it all done in five hours. It's what normal people do in eight hours. He just gets them motivated, compressed into five hours so they have the rest of the day to themselves. And the takeaway value add for the audience is a new way for business owners to think about potentially organizing their workday to make employees happier and more engaged. The second step, once you have your angles, is to send a personalized email to each writer about your story angle. Now here's a few simple rules for your pitch emails. Keep your email below 200 words. I know it doesn't sound like much, but 200 words is actually a lot. And remember, writers get a lot of pitches, so you wanna keep it short. You wanna use the writer's actual name. Everyone likes personalization. You wanna customize your intro to show that you know the outlet and the writer. You want to get to the point of the story angle quickly, take up no more than two paragraphs with that. You wanna use the format that I just went over. What's the hook? Why now? What's the twist? What's the takeaway or value add? Don't spend any time talking about yourself other than a very brief bio and contact info. They don't care about you, they care about the story, and if they wanna know more about you, they'll follow up. Don't send the bulk of the content in the pitch email. Just pitch and wait for them to ask for the rest. The email subject line should probably be no longer than 55 characters and should encompass the content idea. The best thing is if the email subject line is actually a potential title for the piece. And then make sure to use plain language and no buzzwords and no jargon. Attached, you can see the template. This is the basic template that I've been using to pitch media for more than a decade. Obviously, it's customized per writer and per outlet, but this is the basic template I've been using successfully to get thousands of articles placed. Phase three, the follow-up. After you send your pitch email, then you can follow up with the journalists. Just do not annoy them. You should wait two weeks or so uh, and then send a follow-up email asking if they read the initial pitch and if they need more information. You're welcome to call, which actually can be effective. But again, be quick and brief on the phone. Whatever you do, only follow up uh, with a call once and an email twice at most. Instead of continually following up uh, with one pitch, the best thing to do is pitch a completely different idea. One of the really good ways to follow up is actually hit up journalists on Twitter. It shows you're a real person and not a PR flack, and also allows them to see you're sincere and polite and you treat them like a real person, which by the way, you should do when you hit them up on Twitter. Be sincere, polite, treat them like a normal person, don't be a weirdo. Now, if a journalist responds, I hope you know to respond quickly. The biggest problem we run into with authors is they do not prioritize media deadlines. Journalists need you to be flexible and responsive so they can meet their tight deadlines. This is not one of those things where, oh, we'll schedule a call next week. If you do that, you're gonna miss the story. As annoying as it is, if you want coverage, you must work around their timelines. If you make them wait, you will lose the story. I cannot be clearer about that. Furthermore, make sure you make your story as easy as possible for them in all ways. Writers tend to be busy and under heavy deadline pressure. So the easier you make your story, the better. That means having suggested quotes ready case studies ready, photos ready, and even blog post titles all ready to go. If they respond to your pitch and they want that info, the more, the quicker you have it ready, the better off you are, so have it done beforehand. If they don't have the time or space to cover your story, that doesn't mean it's the end of the road. If they've responded and turned you down, you're welcome to pitch them other angles that you have. Do it the same way, short and succinct. The second method is quoting. Quoting is basically making yourself a quoted source for a story that a journalist is gonna write anyway. 
This is one of the very best and easiest ways to get mentioned in all sorts of high level media. And it can help you build relationships with journalists who you can then later on pitch for stories. The best way to become a quoted source for a story is to register on the different sites that reporters use to find experts. The major ones are listed next to it. The biggest one is, is HERO, which is called, uh, which is an acronym for help a reporter out, but there's five or six others that are listed in the, in the notes. Register, I would register for at least two or three of those. Each service is different, but basically the way they work is they send you requests from journalists for quotes or interviews on topics that you're an expert on. <clears throat> now the biggest, like I said, is HERO, but that can often be overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff that comes through HERO. You should examine each one of them and register for the ones you feel appropriate. But the, again, the most important part of this is you must respond quickly and your quotes must be directly on point for what they're looking for. If they ask you for a quote from a chef, don't say, hey, I've cooked at home a few times. You want to talk to me? No, that's a disaster. Register as an expert for the things you're an expert in and nothing else and you'll be good.